All right, welcome back. Well, let's get right into it. This very basic question, what is uh, people analytics? And before I jump into my definition, um, I just wanna provide some historical context because I have been very fortunate uh, to be in this discipline in one form or another for the past 20 years or so. In fact, going back even further, uh, not to date myself, I started my career at Ernst & Young doing performance measurement and management uh, rooted in the balanced scorecard framework. And at that time, uh, Morton and Kaplan, the creators of the Balance Scorecard, were talking about uh, four dimensions on how to manage a business, a financial perspective, an internal operations perspective, a external market customer perspective, and what they call the learning and growth perspective, which is really uh, the employees, the workers. And so I had the audacity when I started this work, um, actually as an entrepreneur in the former Soviet Union, I said, you know, I, I'd like it, but I need it to make sense for me. So I actually changed the learning and growth quadrant to leaders, managers in the workforce. And you know, why did I do that? Because they are the customers of HR. Those people who are throughout the talent life cycle are serving those internal constituents. And in turn, those workers are creating employee experiences, they're driving innovation in the company, and downstream, then the financial outcomes ensue. So when I first started in this, I was doing what was then called human capital analytics. And as you might Imagine I wasn't making many friends walking around the hall saying, hey, look at me, I'm doing human capital analytics. In fact, quite the opposite. It uh, dehumanized the individuals that I was trying to understand better and that leaders were trying to understand. So fast forward, uh, workforce analytics, talent analytics, people analytics, and you know, give credit where credit's due. And obviously given their size and influence, uh, Google really put a stake in the ground and said, we're gonna call it people analytics. They had great successes and celebrate certainly what uh, Laszlo Bach and Prasad Seti and the others who have been there over the years that have done, Brian Wheelie, um, it's really uh, an incredible achievement that they have done over the past, what I would say, 15 uh, years or so to really understand what people are thinking and feeling and what they will likely do in, in the future. So given that, uh, People Analytics was the de facto naming convention that won the day over these other naming conventions. Uh, it's imperfect uh, because customers are people too, contractors are people too, um, but it's also all encompassing from that perspective, particularly when we talk about talent market analytics, which we're going to touch on in a minute. But ultimately, for me, people analytics is a process. It is a process by which to develop insight. So insight is the product. So going back to when I was at Gap in the early 2000s, uh, what we did is we adopted a name, a naming convention of employee insights to mirror what was happening in marketing with consumer insights. So there was a cognitive connection, if you will, between the two. What I'll emphasize is insights spoke to the value that we were delivering not the underlying process that created that value. So that was more palatable for our internal customers. And so fast forward again, there are many uh, groups that are called insights, employee insights, worker insights. Uh, the uh, idea of workforce intelligence is, is out there, which is also a, a favorable naming convention, but ultimately it speaks to the value, which I would like to encourage you to think about. Because when we talk about people analytics, you can get esoteric real quick. But I, I'll finish this definition. These insights are generated to understand the thoughts, feelings, and behaviors of individuals, teams, groups, and organizations. So the key takeaway there, it's multidimensional. It's not just about an individual. It's not just about a group. It's not just about uh, a team or an overall organization, depending on the question being asked, the appropriate referent, if you will, has to be understood. And then the data needs to be collected to better understand those dynamics. So the thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, just to finish up, what we're thinking is informed by how we feel. 
And so I have been very persistent over the years to, okay, you can think all you want, but actually how do you feel? And is that aligned with the behavior? So where I get really excited about where we are today in 2020 is that we are better able to understand what uh, workers' actual behaviors are. And we're capturing that through uh, collaborative tools, email traffic, uh, ONA uh, analysis, uh, and also, frankly, asking more uh, frequent questions via surveys and what have you. So we're really getting to a point where, you know, 15, 20 years ago, it was just way, way out there. It was like almost an unbelievable achievement. So I want to celebrate where we are in this field of people analytics. I also, as I'm going to talk about in the next segment, we're now in this place where we're we have to understand where the ethical boundaries are to a much greater extent uh, because they can be compromised not only for good uh, but potentially uh, to perpetuate bias and that might not be good so we'll talk about in the next segment after a brief commercial break so i'll talk to you in a bit 